Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 18th January 2020. I am Sagan Nandi. I used to work in information technology, mostly in Singapore. Now I have retired. I am living in Thailand and swing trading stocks. This and other videos on the trading systems and techniques that I use are available on my YouTube channel Trading Profitably. You may contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com. I share regular stock analysis in my traders forum sagarnandi.com and also on the Twitter page sagarnandi. All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Before I begin, let me go through the disclaimer first. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, in today's topics, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. Then I will demonstrate the use of the 360 degrees analysis to find potential trades. That is the technique I use where I try to align the market level, sector industry level, fundamental as well as technical forces in favor of my trades. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am beginning the commodities analysis using the oil ETF USO. Looking at it using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template together I call this at a glance template. Last week I didn't make a video for the market roundup. Two weeks ago when I conducted my last weekly market roundup at that time US oil closed at this point in the daily chart and at this point in the weekly chart. At that time the geopolitical tension was very high, oil price was going up and everybody probably was bullish on oil. However, in that weekly market roundup, the video is available in my YouTube channel, I saw that it was at a watermark resistance level in the daily chart and also at a watermark resistance in the weekly chart. Looking at that, I suggested that if price could go down from there, then you could try to take a low risk short entry. That was a very contrarian trade because almost everybody was bullish on oil at that time. My analysis proved accurate because since then oil has dropped significantly. What about now? In the daily chart it has displayed a bullish headwind possible reversal signal. It has found support at the white and the yellow direction lines. This Friday's candle shape is somewhat bullish somewhat indecisive you may say. In the weekly chart also the 
price has found support at the yellow direction line and this week's candle shape is bullish. Looking at that, it seems to me that the next likely move of oil from here is to the upside. However, there is no swing trade setup using the daily time frame. Not right now. You may wait for such a swing trade setup using the Q unambiguous checklists or you could switch to intraday time frame and look for a low risk buying opportunity there. Gold ETF GLD in my last market roundup two weeks ago I analyzed GLD and at that time price was at this level in the weekly chart and at this level in the daily chart. In the daily chart price was significantly above the upper boundary level. It was bullish however too extended for me to look for a buy setup. Since then price tried to go up initially and then pull back somewhat. At the right edge, it is still above the upper boundary level, not a point where I look for a buy setup. There is no shorting opportunity also right now because gold is clearly bullish in the weekly chart, both in terms of color and shape. I will avoid taking any swing trade in gold right now. After commodities analysis, I continue with the market level analysis. The aim is to find out if the market is bullish. If so, I am going to look for only long stock trading opportunities. And if the market is bearish, then I am going to look for only stock shorting opportunities. SPY made a new all time high this week. Since I last analyzed SPY in my previous market roundup, it has continued to go up. This week's candle shape and color both are strongly bullish. In the daily price is going up almost in a straight line supported by multiple memory support trend lines. It is clearly bullish. At the same time, it is above the upper boundary level, too extended for me to look for any buying opportunity. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. This is also bullish. QQQ made a new all time high. The weekly candle color and shape both are very bullish. The relative performance line is showing that it is significantly outperforming the market. It is very overbought like SPY, overbought even in the weekly chart for many weeks now. In the daily it is in a clear uptrend above the upper boundary level that is too extended for me to look for a buy setup. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA This also made a new all time high. The relative performance is sharply tilting down, showing it is underperforming the market. It is also overbought in the weekly chart for many weeks. In the daily, price is going up and it is supported by multiple memory support trend lines above the upper boundary level to overbought for me to look for any buy setup. It did display a series of possible reversal signals in the daily chart and also displayed a possible reversal signal in the weekly chart. Though the headwind signals came, there was no bearish headwind short trade setup. What was our action plan? Our action plan was to 
apply a trailing stop in existing long positions. The trailing stop was not hit. It was a precautionary measure that we would take. The stop was not hit and therefore we will continue to hold our existing long position. However, not enter a new long position now because price is too extended to the upside. Russell 2000 ETF IWM Here the weekly could break above the watermark resistance and end with a bullish shape, bullish color candle. The relative performance is moving sideways showing it is neither outperforming nor underperforming the market. In the daily chart price is going up with higher highs and higher lows. It is supported by multiple support memory trend lines. It is bullish. However, price is at the upper boundary level to extend it for me to look for a buy setup. That completes my market level analysis. As I mentioned, the aim is to decide if the market is bullish or bearish. From the market ETF study, we can see that the market is clearly bullish. It is overbought but clearly bullish. Several of the ETFs made new all-time highs. And if you notice, all of them are supported by trend line supports, memory trend line supports, not very far from the current price. That shows that the market is bullish and it is probably going to remain bullish. It will take significant effort from the bears to push price down below the multiple memory support lines. Therefore, I tend to think that even if there is a pullback, the immediate pullback may not bring price down much. In this scenario, it is safer to look for buying opportunities. However, avoid buying stocks that are technically overbought or fundamentally overvalued. The market is bullish from the market ETF study. Let's see if we can gather additional insight from the next level of my 360 degrees analysis that is the sector level analysis. Let's look at the one month sector performance. Here I am looking at the 11 sectors across three review periods. Red bar shows this week's performance, green bar previous week's performance and blue bar two weeks performance before that. This week 10 of the 11 sectors went up. All the red bars are to the right of the zero line except energy. Energy fell down and it fell down by significant percentage. One week ago also energy sector dropped significantly. Remember my last market roundup that I conducted two weeks ago, I showed that there was a probability, high probability that oil price would reverse because I saw price was at the watermark resistance level in both weekly and daily charts. Since then, oil dropped and that also pulled down the energy sector stocks. Based on my last market roundup two weeks ago, you could not only take profitable short trade in US oil, but you could also probably take profitable short trades in energy stocks. At minimum, you could protect profit in long trades that you had in energy stocks. Overall, 
most of the sectors went up this week and if we look at the sector rotation from one week ago one week ago two sectors were up nine were down and this week 10 are up only one is down the sector level is also clearly bullish the market level was bullish and the sector level is also bullish even more reason to continue to look for bullish opportunities and avoid shorting stocks right now the sectors rotated from strength to weakness across different review periods and you can see that sector rotation clearly from this scorecard and heat map here all the sectors are analyzed over 12 monthly periods and then more frequently over 10 day 5 day etc Cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness. The pace column shows acceleration, deceleration. Cyan is acceleration, magenta is deceleration. Using 360 degrees technique, you would buy stocks into strength and strength in the recent period. Looking at the five day period, Instantly, you can see communication services and utilities are the strongest. Therefore, you will look for buying opportunities there. If you use acceleration, then you can see materials is the most accelerating sector. Using acceleration, you could also look for buying opportunities in materials. Usually, I look at the five days period. However, sometimes you may open up the more recent periods, two day, one day, and zero day. The zero day scores update in real time. Now the market is closed, therefore the one day and zero day scores are the same. When you look at the most recent periods, two day, one day, and zero day, sometimes you are able to identify sector rotation well ahead of others. If you look at utilities, it was week earlier. The score was in magenta color. Then it started to transition into cyan. Over five days, it was already the second best performing sector. And on Friday, it became the very best performing sector. Utilities didn't only continue its strength, it improved its strength on Friday. That is all the more reason to look for buying opportunities in utilities. It is also one of the most accelerating sectors of our 5 day period. Which sector to avoid? You will probably avoid healthcare. Over 10 days, it was the best performing sector. Over 5 days, the score reduced, the color turned somewhat magenta, and since then, the score has gone down further. The color has turned more magenta. If you had long position in healthcare, you could protect or book profit. The market is bullish, therefore you will probably not look for shorting opportunities, but at minimum you could protect or book profit in your existing healthcare stock long positions. Another sector that caught my attention is financials. It was pretty weak over a long period of time. Even over five days, it is very weak. However, on Thursday and Friday, its score improved significantly. This is what I meant when I said that sometimes you may look for the two-day, one-day and even zero-day scores 
to look for sectors turning around well ahead of others. Financial seems to be turning around and you could catch the turn around well ahead of others looking at the sector rotation happening in real time using this scorecard and heat map. Now you have seen that the market is bullish, the sectors are overall bullish, 10 sectors went up this week, only one energy went down and then further you saw that financial seems to be turning around. The most lucrative trading opportunities right now may be found in financials. How will you go about actually identifying a stock that you may buy. You could do that in different ways. You could carry out a top-down analysis, bottom-up analysis or even a third approach that I use sometimes that is insight-based analysis. In top-down analysis, you will drill down into the financials industries first. These are the financials sector industries. Let's look at the strongest industries in this sector. Let's choose this few and drill down into the underlying stocks. These are the underlying stocks and we could look for the stocks that went up most. Let's say more than 0.5% on Friday. We are left with these stocks. Let's focus on only them. Because the sector was weak for a long time, we will prefer to buy undervalued stocks. I can apply the smart filter. These are the undervalued stocks. Let me also look for stocks where the secondary valuation is also showing undervaluation. Let's focus on only those stocks. These stocks are fundamentally strong in terms of valuation. They belong to industries that are strong and the sector is also turning around. The last step you will carry out is to look at their technical charts to see if there is a low risk buying opportunity using one of the Q trade setups. And you can identify if there is a setup or not by applying the unambiguous checklists. That is how you will carry out a top-down analysis to look for financial stocks to buy. What about bottom-up analysis? In bottom-up analysis, you may have certain scenario in mind that you would like to apply on the financial stocks. In Q-Systems, I use this 50 scans, I can either look for trade setups like the bounce, box, breakout and go with flow, that is trend following trade setup. I could run those setups individually or I could combine them with additional criteria. Let me look for stocks that are breaking out, upward, giving a long breakout setup and I want to combine that with stocks that are going up with extreme bullish pressure. That is, I am looking for stocks breaking out with high pressure. I am going to run these two scans in a waterfall model. That is, the result from one exploration will be fed into the next exploration. What is the list of stocks that I will use? I can use any list that I have prepared or I could use some of the custom built lists that come with Metastock. I could run it on the financial sector stocks or I could run on the 
stocks in the banking industry. I don't have any data saved on my computer. Let me run this scenario that is looking for stocks that are breaking out with extreme pressure on the 231 stocks that are in the banking industry group. I am going to run this scenario on live data. No data is saved on my computer. And you can see though it is collecting data from Reuters server, still it is quite fast. If you ran it on local data, it would be even faster. And remember I am running these explorations while also recording this video. That is also slowing down the performance. Still the scans ran very fast. And I am left with only three stocks. What are these three stocks? CFG, EWBC and FHN. Next step will be to open these three stocks using Q at a glance template. See if there is any valid trade setup. And if so, check these stocks fundamentals to ensure that they are fundamentally strong. That is the way you will carry out bottom up analysis. After the top down and bottom up approaches, I am going to demonstrate a third approach that I often use. This is an extremely fast approach in identifying trades that are showing strength across multiple levels, industry level, fundamental as well as technical levels. In the inside tab, I can look at the best performing stocks or the worst performing stocks under various categories. I'm going to look for possible buying opportunities in financial sector. The financials was weak for a long time. Therefore, I'm going to look for undervalued stocks. So I scroll down to the category of best performing undervalued stocks. These are the 10 best performing stocks that are undervalued, Friday's data. And I can see one of them belong to the financial sector, regional banks. What is that stock? First Horizon National Corp, FHN. Remember, when I ran the bottom up analysis, I ended with three stocks and FHN was one of them. How is its industry? Let me quickly look that up. This is regional banks industry. It was weaker earlier and now it is improving. Remember financials as a sector was weak and it is just starting to turn around. It is expected that from magenta it will recover gradually, not necessarily it will turn from deep magenta to deep cyan in one step, in only one day. It will transition from weakness to strength gradually and using this real-time sector industry scorecard heat map, you are able to catch the turn around ahead of others, sometimes well ahead of others. Regional banks is not one of the strongest industries now. However, it is clearly switching from weakness to strength. That allows me to buy a regional bank stock. What about FHN's fundamentals? I can check that out quickly from the peer analysis tool. I'm going to use FHN in as the root stock and I am using the industry and similar industries as the peer relationship. The peer analysis tool first found some basic information about the stock, then it found the list of peer stocks and in the 
third step it is retrieving detail about all these 57 peer stocks and calculating vital statistics the calculation is complete now instantly using the scorecard we can see it is undervalued stock both in terms of valuation and secondary valuation it has robust earnings quality pays a decent dividend of 3.24 percentage next earnings due is 16th april that is several weeks away it allows us to take a swing trade now and you can see it also has excellent earnings growth both for the quarterly periods as well as the yearly periods not only that it has excellent revenue growth over quarterly and yearly periods as well on friday it went up by 4.29 percent fundamentally this is the kind of stock that i like to buy especially in sectors that are turning around i look for undervalued stocks FHN is undervalued and on top of that it has excellent earnings as well as revenue growth probably couldn't ask for a better stocks in terms of fundamentals the industry is strengthening fundamentally the stock is very strong let's look at its technicals This is FHN using the weekly daily at a glance template. In the daily chart, it was inside a wide triangle pattern. And on Friday, it broke out with extreme bullish pressure. Those were the two scans that I ran. I combined them together. That is breaking out with high pressure and FHN was one of them and I found the same stock from inside tab as well in the weekly also it is breaking out of the memory resistance coming out of the triangle pattern in weekly as well also with high bullish pressure this is giving a possible breakout long trade setup in a stock that is fundamentally very strong both in terms of valuation also in terms of earnings and revenue growth and the industry is also starting to go up you could probably take a long position at or near friday's market close or you could look for an entry next day if price goes up above friday's high and if you get filled you will probably put stop just below Friday's low. That is how you will carry out the inside based analysis. Whether you carry out the top down analysis, bottom up analysis, or inside based analysis, in Q technique, you will always carry out the 360 degrees analysis. That is, identify trading opportunities where sector industry strength, fundamental strength, as well as technical strengths are combined together. Those give truly high probability low risk trades. Let me summarize. I carried out the 360 degrees analysis starting at the market level the market was clearly bullish spy qqq dia all made new all-time highs iwm also went up at the same time all of them are extended you may avoid taking long trades in these etfs themselves as the market is bullish you will probably look for only long trades in stocks the sectors are also bullish then sectors went up and only energy went down of the sectors that went up 
financials is of special interest because it is turning around from severe weakness to strength. And when you drill down, you can look for fundamentally strong stocks that are giving a trade setup. You could find such stocks either using top down or bottom up or inside based analysis. And I demonstrated all these three approaches. I could identify one possible breakout trade setup in a regional bank stock. You can carry out similar 360 degrees analysis to find other opportunities as well. In this market, it is safer to continue to look for long trades and avoid shorting. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.